Hello, welcome back to my channel, Loretta Threads. Today we are making a cutout turtleneck style top. We are using knit or stretch fabrics, which is why this is a seamless construction because this is the best way sometimes to overcome um, issues you may face when you're using stretch fabric. Sometimes they warp. So a good way to combat that is just to do a seamless overlock. Um, it can be confusing though when you're doing seamless construction because there are about four layers of fabric. So for the purposes of this video, I will be making it um, in these fabrics. Green is going to be outer, red is lining, and then purple is just the neckband. So let's get into it. So to begin, you're just going to print page one. Use that little measure box. If it measures correctly, you can print the remaining pages. Once you've done that, you can join them together. And when you join them together, you only tape one X, the bottom X, and then you do the full length of the tape, making sure that you're not stretching out the paper as you do. Because this is a seamless top, for the purposes of this video, I will be making it in two fabrics. The red fabric will be the lining and the green fabric I will be using will be the um, outside of the top. Usually this whole thing would be made in the same color and the same fabric, but so that I can help you and you don't get confused while we're making it, we're just gonna be using the contrasting fabric. After you have cut out the red fabric, you're gonna repeat that process. So you will fold that green fabric and place over the pattern and finish cutting it out in the correct size to the, all the pieces that you need. So here we have the fabric on the fold again, and we've just placed that pattern on top and cut it out. This segment here will be the neck collar part of the top. So to begin, we are going to focus on the front of the top. So what we're gonna do is make sure that both sides of the fabric, the good sides of the fabric are facing each other. So bad side of the fabric facing outwards so right now that red fabric that you're looking at directly that's the bad side so I've popped some pins in and now I'm going to bring that across to my straight sewer I'm doing this on quite um, a narrow stitch because I want it to be quite close so that when we make these little cuts here um, it doesn't go past the thread point next up we are going to attach the shoulder seams together so good sides of the fabric facing each other um, and just add some pins in there and you're going to repeat that process to um, the remaining three shoulders. So repeat that process again. As we can see there, the good side of that fabric, the top layer, it's facing down. So good sides face together and popping the pins in again. Now you're gonna run over these seams on your overlocker and once that's done, you are going to pull um, the lining through the top so that you can get it laid flat. Just tinker around with it so that all the right seams are going the right way. The next step is to attach the side seams. So I have folded over that fabric. Good sides are kissing each other and we've got the bad sides facing towards the camera and then repeat the process again on the red lining of the fabric. And we're gonna then bring that across to your overlocker and overlock those sides. Once so you've done that, just try to turn it back inside out again so that it looks like how a normal top would. and then you will be left with something that looks like this. So the next step now is um, sealing off those um, leg, sorry, arm seams. So what you're gonna do here is see how I have got that top layer. I grabbed about two, three centimeters and I folded it. I did the same with the red and then I'm gonna grab a pin and just pop that pin in there. This is a temporary pin, we're going to remove it but because sewing seamless is like sewing things backwards, it just makes life easier so that you're pulling the right seams together. So here, now that I've um, put those things together, 
um, I know exactly where I'm going to be sewing. So I'm just going to pull out that temporary pin that I had before and I'm going to now insert that back in into this little seam here. So remember, put one side of the seam facing the left way and then put the other side of the seam, the other side there, yep, yeah, it's facing the right way. So then you put a needle right in the seam of that center and then you repeat that process again with the other side so two three centimeters i just do a really big fold so i can find um, that fabric with ease and now i know exactly the point that i'm going to sew if you have previously sewn seamless swimwear or bottoms or anything like that they sometimes explain this little burrito thing where the fabric gets wrapped inside of this burrito and you pull it out that never made sense to me try not to think about it just do your best to keep the side seam going so remember that bit stays flat that side's that way for a really nice flat profile see how i'm pulling this bit here people call that burrito i have no idea why but we're just going to try to focus on that side seam so we're going to move forward and then as i run out of fabric to sew I'm just going to search in there, pull out what I can and keep going, trying not to overthink it. Um, that's as best as I can explain it. So just slow down when you get to those seams, remember. One seam goes forward, one seam goes back so that they're touching each other and we have a really nice flat profile. So as I get towards the end of it, I have a really big bulking that's stuck in there. I'm trying not to overthink it as long as I have enough um, room to keep moving my machine forward. Um, that's the best that you can do. If you tried to pull it all out all at once, it wouldn't work. You have to do about five centimeters at a time and pull and then five centimeters at a time and pull. Um, as we get to the end here, you'll actually see that we are back at the start. Um, it can be quite confusing. Try not to overthink it and just focus on that process of closing that side seam. After you have done that to both of the arm seams, just turn it inside out um, so that you can get it to what it would look like if it was a normal top. Um, and as you can see there, <clears throat> we've got those nice closed seams, perfect, seamless, and we are happy. So I'm gonna pop a pin here now in this little bit here because we're gonna attach the collar. Um, we don't want bulking, so we want to try to make sure that those seams are really nice and flat. And remember, we do a nice flat seam by having the overlocked edge facing one way and then the, under other, the other layer facing the other way. So I'm just popping a little pin in here so that I can keep that flat for when I attach the collar. So now I am just getting my ruler and I am adding a point here that's two centimeters in and then I'm adding another point here two centimeters in. The reason that we are doing that is because we are going to overlap these two um, points on top of each other so that we can get a really crisp um, diamond shape at the top. I have previously made this top where it was the whole thing was a cutout and I didn't do this overlap and you just you don't have that same crispness crispness in that diamond. So I'm just going to move that across to my straight sewer and do a little quick tack stitch so that it holds nicely when I'm attaching my neck band and here that is done. 
now it's time to attach the neck collar turtleneck whatever you want to call it so good sides of the fabric are kissing each other leave that closed we're going to overlock this edge so once you've overlocked it we are going to fold it in half get those points touching and remember one seam goes one way and the other goes the opposite and I just pop a pin there so that I can keep that stitch nice and flat um, once you have that done see how I folded it here I fold it there so that I can I can find the center front of that neckband and I just put a pin in there as a marker I'm then going to do the same thing with this um, putting pinching these two seams together so that I can find the center point of the back and I pop a pin in there as a little marker so now when I feed through my um, neckband I know exactly where to pin them so you may have also noticed that I have turned the top inside out remembering that red is lining we've done this because it's much easier to attach the collar this way because the seam that we're going to now create will be concealed on the inside of the top so here I am finding that center point of the top and marking that up with the center of that collar and adding a pin in to pin it down. I'll then repeat this process with the back of it. So finding um, the back, pinning it together, and then I just popped some pins in all around the circumference of that neckline so that um, there isn't any stretch or pulling. It's a good idea to do this because on sun sewing patterns not all neck bands completely are perfectly meet up with the top so if you need to stretch them a little bit either the top or the collar this way um, you can have it stretched without anyone being able to tell so i did forget to film me overlocking that attachment um, but i'm sure you get the idea so here i am now i'm going to remove about four centimeters off the base of the top and I'm just removing that excess and then with the um, exterior of the top because I'm now going to cover stitch this bottom hem I'm adding a little marker here with some chalk so that I just have a reference point of where to fold um, once you have popped in pins all around the edge of the top you can then take that across to your cover stitch and begin cover stitching the end if you don't have a cover stitch machine though, you can just um, finish this top with a seamless bottom. Um, I opted not to do this because I like it better with a cover stitch, but it is an option to you if you don't have a cover stitch machine. So this is also optional. You can, if you have a pair of duckbill scissors, you can then trim away the excess. Once you have a look at this top, you'll actually be able to see that my cover stitch machine warped this fabric and it wasn't nice and flat. However, it was perfect for my bamboo fabric. So I did not change the tensions for that reason. That is the end of the tutorial. I hope that was helpful. If it wasn't or you have any questions, comment below and I will get back to you. Um, please also feel free to subscribe to my channel so that you can get first notified when I drop new videos because they are coupled with um, patterns and discount codes on those patterns the first 48 hours that I drop new videos. So yeah, good luck, happy sewing and please reach out if I can help. Thank you.